Well, we meet again, and uh, what have we got here? This is the famous red motor. Six cylinder inline, made in Australia. They built literally millions of them, I'm gonna say. You probably look up the stats yourself on Wikipedia or whatever, but they must have made millions of these between the late 60s, perhaps early 70s, right through to the 90s, in its latest iteration, which was fuel injected and modernized. But this was commonly referred to as the red motor for obvious reasons, although the red is a lot more orange than I think, but perhaps red motor sounds better than orange motor. But anyway, what we've got here is an engine that I purchased secondhand for a couple of hundred bucks. And the idea was we were gonna use this engine, and we still will, to test our throttle bodies. Here at Rotec, we make these throttle body systems. This is an old secondhand one, but you get the idea. And we need uh, an engine to set the idle up and just make sure they fundamentally work properly. Um, and yes, we check them, check them on the bench, but unless we physically run them on the engine, we don't actually know that they're, they're spot on. Now, most of the time when we send TBIs out, they're good. We check for flow rates on the bench and that sort of thing, but there'd be nothing better than running it on an engine. In fact, when we run them on our radial engines, which is one of these things here, which we manufacture here as well, we can check, we obviously, we often run a few TBI on the same engine just to check for customers, but that's not always available to do that. So here the idea is to have a second handy or an engine that we can uh, set up on a rolling stand and just quickly bolt TBIs to it with via adapter, adapters for the intake and uh, dial them in. Make sure they're idling properly, no fundamental flaws. Generally, once you've got them idling nicely and they're running nicely, you can, they're, they're gonna work every time. If there's a problem, it normally shows itself up real early and it's something, you know, obvious and you can correct it. So that was the idea. Uh, I didn't expect to be overhauling it to this sort of level, which is virtually a show engine now. Um, but I just couldn't help myself. I took the rocker cover off and I thought, let's have a look at the, the valves. It was pretty cruddy in there. I thought, I'll give that a clean up. And that before you knew it, I've torn the entire engine apart and I've literally serviced everything. I'm glad I did take the engine apart because it had a couple of problems. It had a distorted cylinder head here uh, with about a 0.3 millimetre uh, bow in it. So I was able to mill that out. And in fact, it was leaking water into the number five cylinder. So it was good to fix that. And uh, also the distributor drive on the distributor. This is a brand new electronic distributor. I bought Chinese off eBay, about 150 bucks, brand new. But anyway, this gear here was plastic on the old engine and it is stripped. So I'm gonna make the call that the, the original owner had a gut full of the, the water leak or the water consumption, burning water, and also the fact that it quit on him once the distributor stopped driving. But otherwise the engine uh, was pretty good. All the main bearings, um, big ends, the crankshaft here, it all checks out nicely. So I gave the cylinders a hone. I've got a, a rigid hone over here. Uh, there it is. And so I, re, I, I literally honed all the cylinders carefully. And then I gave them a bit of a, a polish up or a dunny brush with this uh, ceramic stone. All good. And the cylinders come up good. There are a couple of spots in the cylinders where there's a little bit of pitting from surface rust like down there you see. But it's actually very shallow and it's beneath the surface. So I can live with that. I can live with that. The lifters are hydraulic, you can see them there. They've been stripped apart. They had a lot of water and crap in them, so I was glad I cleaned them out too. They probably wouldn't have worked properly if I hadn't have cleaned them up and made them smooth again and nice. Everything's been cleaned up. The push rods, the cam, the springs, the valves have been dressed. Everything's been cleaned and painted. The head will be reseated. Piston rings and end caps are all good. You can see the rocker cover is in good sh has been uh, painted, cleaned and painted. What a brand new chrome um oil cap old school this engine was a little bit later so it had the pcv valves in it so i'm going to blank them off and just run the old school cap which has got the breather in it i think chevy do the same thing in fact it's probably a chevy cap starter motor's been rico the alternator's ready to reassemble exhaust has been painted white intake manifold as i said we're going to make an adapt i'll make an adapter here that i can run the various tbis on water pump as i said sump's been repainted there's my ignition leads New electronic distributor cap repainting, replacing the old points cap. Here's the bell housing that once had the, the, uh, the three-speed automatic gearbox on it. 
I've removed that and kept the bow housing and I'll make a nice little a mount point here at the back. So when I make my engine mount, it'll take this, uh, I'll make a little right angle bracket that supports the rear end of the engine and the engine mounts here on the sides of the motor will do their normal thing and I'll build a big box frame that supports the engine. Should work out well. I'll put a little panel on there with instruments and gauges and all sorts of things for oil pressure and even lambda. So everything's painted up nice and ready to go. So my nuts and bolts are all organised and cleaned. So this will be a bit of fun putting this together and then at the end of it all I'm going to run it with a TBI. So uh, let's slap it together. Well, I had to pause the time lapse on this build because right off the get-go, I had trouble putting this crank in. Now, I know the crank came out perfectly fine and it should go in perfectly fine. I've got all the bearings in the right spot and they're all nicely worn in. They're not, they're not tight. But every time I tighten up the rear main where the felt seals are, it would just lock the crank up too tight. So I, the, there's, under this cradle, there are two in the crankcase and here there are two split seals made of felt. And they're like a rope, and you sort of feed them in and tighten it up. But there's a, they're really there's a lot of stiffness to them, so I sort of figured out just intuitively that I should oil those and soften them up. So they come as like a rope that's quite stiff, so you soften it up with a hammer, soft hammer, get it all pliable, mix it with oil, sort of get it all mushy like a, a greasy rope. I stuck it back in. Still, still a bit too tight, so I wasn't sure what I was doing. Jumped on the old YouTube there and uh, certainly found that it's, uh, it's, a, it's just how it is. You've just got to persist. So I noticed on the back of the crank where the seal runs, there's a slight knurl. So it looks like it's almost designed to cut it. So I kept working with lubrication and molly grease and all that sort of stuff and just kept beating it into the slot and working it backwards and forwards with these bolts because there's nothing on the front really to grab and these weren't really very good. And I've got it to a point now where the crank turns and it's designed to, the the felt seals are designed to be tight and uh, but they say uh, on the engine builders um, that, that use these engines the hold on engines and it's probably the Chevy's too I'd imagine um, that yeah once you can turn the crank with about 10 foot pound of torque you're in the ballpark so I'm in that point now so let's go ahead and put the rest of it together Thank you. 